right, I'll just get started. Um, thanks for coming. This is uh, my monthly town hall. Uh, as most of you know, I think most of you have been to at least one of them. I do them every month, uh, around this time every month. I cycle through all the libraries because it's just convenient. They're in every single district. It allows people to come close to their house or their, their place of employment. But as all of you have been here now, I don't do a presentation. There's no screen or and I, I don't tell you what I want you to know. I ask questions uh, or I allow you to ask me questions. So um, how these typically work is it's open forum. Anyone can ask anything. Some people have questions of me. Some people just have comments. And some people have things they want me to look into. I write those down. We've actually accomplished a fair bit from people's requests during these town halls, whether it be with, with animal services or it be uh, advisory boards. I just had a meeting here at five o'clock today with, with somebody who last town hall asked me about setting up a disabled person advisory board uh, within the county. I've since been working with the administration at the county and I followed up with her today and we're actually we're working on that advisory board and we just had that meeting and that came as a result of a town hall. So um, we do accomplish things here. So with that, I'm just going to open this up. I'm here for as long as you want me uh, for any questions, comments, or concerns. Yes, What's your name? What's my name? Yes. My name is George Cruz. I am the District 7 County Commissioner. I guess you should start with that, but at this point in time, I just do <laughs> that. Uh, I'm the District 7 County Commissioner, so I'm at large. We have five district commissioners. We're in District 2, so that's Commissioner Ballard's district. Uh, we have two at large commissioners. I'm one of them. So we get voted on and oversee the entirety of the county. We don't have specific districts per se. All right. That was your own question? Uh, All right, you're easy. I knew the answer to that one. Let think about it. I said I'd hold back a bit, but you, this... you said you're going to let everyone else talk first. I know, but I want to follow with what you right said. After, what's your name? Well, where are you from? Home oh, Meadow. And how long have you lived here? Uh, seven years. Seven years. Uh, you're, just, this, you're, you're just, this is a softball you're teeing up for Carol. Is this, is this, is this, is this the first time you've that, met yeah. your county commissioner? Yes. Well, that's wonderful. <laughs> How many constituents do we have in each district? How many do we have? Well, because we did redistricting. Now it's they're, even about that. There are approximately 80,000. 80, 90,000. 80, 90, um, some are smaller because we assumed District 1 and District 5 were going to grow faster because that's where the growth is. So we intentionally structured them with less people. So there will be a little more. So you intentionally in structured which, which districts with less people? 1 and 5. One and because five. you anticipate that you're going to add to <laughs> 1 and 5 incrementally yes. to Gross. reach the same yeah we know where we're going <laughs> so so do you know what district you live in i do i guess yes i'm not sure do you know who your I'm county middle. commissioner is for district two yeah do you know who your county Ballard commissioner is who's your commissioner okay there you go and you'll get to meet her i'm sure she's having a town hall in about a week or two yeah All right so on your thing of disability you have a, a citizens advisory committees if anybody isn't familiar with what a citizen's advisory committee is, everybody is familiar with what a citizen's advisory committee is? George? I'm yes. familiar. Our citizen's advisory committees are? Citizen's advisory committees, we have about 20 of them. Some of them are more active than others. Some of them are effectively inactive. Uh, they're basically an opportunity for citizens to give input to the county for various topics. Most of them are state oriented uh like the affordable housing advisory board is required if we're going to get ship funds and sale funds for affordable housing um if we get grants and funds for libraries we have a library board other ones we start up ourselves then we have flexibility for instance our lmac board for environmental land that uh has always been in existence mainly as a tree board uh it's been it's been since expanded once we passed a millage to purchase land for environmental purposes uh, we have the right to start up as many advisory boards as we want one of which like i mentioned at the beginning is the, the potential for starting up a disabled persons advisory board and george remember i have asked for a rural citizens and lands advisory board because of the growth of district ones and district five i believe i've been asking about that for are we going on about three years now right and one of the things that I was told, and that, as George said, there are some advisory boards that are um, mandated by the state, right? Historic Preservation Correct. Board, it's mandated by the state. Um, 
and on these boards, uh, citizens could volunteer to serve on the board. And there's usually each board has seats, right? Like the advisor, the affordable housing. Like, what are some of the seats on the affordable housing board? You have to have certain representatives. Affordable housing board has eleven different seats. Um, they try to make it well-rounded so you can have well-rounded topics. So affordable housing includes developers of affordable housing, includes people who work for nonprofits that work with uh, wraparound services for people needing affordable and workforce housing, uh, mortgage brokers, someone with a realtor license, somebody on the planning commission, somebody in the school board. Um, I'm not gonna go through all this. Now is animal all, services, but, a citizen's advisory board, a state mandated board, or is that one, that's one, one that they're, you're answering? It was one that services. was just created, like our disability, if we're going to create a disabilities advisory that, that, that board. That would not be state mandated. Okay, and I have been asking for a rural citizens advisory board okay. for three years, understanding that because of our growth out in East Manatee County, we felt that would be a way for us to work with, you know, as you said, you have these citizens advisory boards, you bring in citizens that have special skills and talents and things that would add to that. So, um, I've been asking for that for three years, and one of the things that I was told, and I, this is the truth, uh, was that we don't know how to do that. So I'm hoping that if we are going to have a disabilities advisory board, which I think is great, shoot, I'd go for a citizens, rural citizens, disabled, disabled rural citizens advisory board. But um, if we're gonna do that, I guess that means we're gonna figure out how to set up some citizens advisory boards. And maybe we'll get our Rural Citizens Advisory Board. Okay. That'd be great, wouldn't it? And then I won't have to repeat this when That's I go up. I know you can repeat, but you can also, like, the meeting I had at 5 o'clock was with somebody who requested it, who showed up with a list of different counties and Got cities it. who have those boards for me, Excellent. and a list of potential seats. So if we can and, do it but So the, the point is this person actually put forth the word to create the three. framework for an advisory board for me to pass along. Okay. And with the Animal Services Board, when was the last time? That doesn't exist. That doesn't exist. We don't have that. We, we do have it. We talked to you about it when you were here, when, when I we met with you over at the other library, um, with Lindley Washington was with you, Rocky that, that at Rocky Bluff. That one um, was very active and being utilized for a number of years, and then it just stopped. And there was no activity. Like I said, we have about 20 of them, and some of them are fully inactive, so, and some of them are more active. The question becomes, how do they become inactive? Is it because directives, where's the breakdown? Because we need it, which is why people like us continue to come to meetings and speak about what's going on at the shelter, because there is such a disconnect. So that board already is, there's already, it's already all the foundation for it is laid out. The titles are there, what you need to do in order to be the person in that seat, it's all set up. So why aren't we, or you that was something that you and Washington were gonna look into, volunteers. but I know um, Lee's gone and all of that. Yeah, there's no reason. I'll, look, I'll put this on the list and look into it. I mean, there's no reason not to have, my argument has been we should have as many advisory boards as humanly possible, why not? <clears throat> it costs us virtually nothing. Uh, we utilize it about an hour or two of office space within the building, and we have one or two staff members come down to oversee it. It's, you know, well, I, sure I think we should have more advisory boards. That's why I, I agreed to help start up the disabled person, but because why not? It, it gives the citizens more voice on things. Um, it's just advisory. It makes recommendations. The board can choose to accept those recommendations or not. Uh, again, some of them that are state mandated are a little more than recommendations because the Affordable Housing Board has to pass a uh, the letters that we call it A through K um, has to pass every year to be submitted and approved by HUD and approved by the state to get the, yeah. to get funding. Uh, citizen, the, no, citizen, the Children's Services Board is a little more specific because they actually have a dedicated pool of money they have to allocate. LMAC's a little more specific because they're actually making recommendations for land. Other advisory boards are simply that. It's advisory. It's people getting in a room once a month, once a quarter to just talk about things that they could potentially propose to the county. Um, how often do they actually bring those things to the boards? Entirely at the discretion of those advisors. So boards. when we have the Animal Services Board and we're discussing the situation with our animal services, there was no time that any interaction was made between the Citizens Advisory Board. We have affordable housing issues that go up before the boards and there's nobody except, of course, for Glenn, 
that gets yeah. up there and speaks about affordable housing. Right. So one of the things that I have an issue with is we have 20 citizens advisory boards that <clears throat> don't really get to do anything, do they? That's not the well, I think that um, well, I mean, again, your, your definition of an advisory board is vague. I expect them at least to make I, I, an appearance before the board, the board question, to be so a citizen's advisor. An advisory board includes the planning commission. The planning commission is super active. They're on YouTube every single month. They are the ones that get yelled at by everybody when somebody comes. Up. That is an advisory board. The affordable housing is an advisory board. Children's services is an advisory board. The value adjustment board is an advisory board. All of those boards are very active and do things, but not all of them do things that need to be directed to the county afterward. Um, they just, they don't do things that, that present to the board. The LMAC presents to the board. No, the um, LMAC doesn't present to the board. The county the, staff that runs the LMAC presents to the board. That's fine. Um, none, the nonetheless, LMAC it's the same is. thing. LMAC is the environmental land advisory um, so they're doing things that get presented. There are some that don't, or some that just work directly within departments. Okay, so you're you're supportive of that. That's great. Um, I think that a number of residents have their passion projects and are willing to show up and do the work and want that line of communication open. I've met with you so, a few times, and, and there's many people that are have issues or concerns. Um, so how do we as citizens that want these boards that may not be functioning or working right now, what do we do to get them going again and open up that line of communication? Is there something that we can take charge of to demonstrate that we want this? Right, right this minute, I would say no. Just let me try um, okay. Because like I said, I, I reached out about the disabled board and we're working on it. I mean, I can get things done. Uh, by pushing for them and let me try it first. If that doesn't work, then by all means, everyone can send us hundreds of emails, but sometimes that backfires. Um, it's easier just to try to get it accomplished. Um, and I can reach out to Charlie, I can reach out to uh, Sarah, I can reach out for now, Jody, uh, and try to get that advisory board reconvened. And then we'd have to look at it, see whether or not it's expired, what the seats look like, if it makes sense. At the end of the day, I don't have full say in it. It's a board decision. Uh, the board would have to vote to reinstate it. If it's currently not instated, we'd have to put out application, like an opening for applications, and the board would pick the, the people on that, on that board. Okay, so you guys would hand pick who you put on the board, so it's not just a matter of if a, a citizen is interested. It's not first come first. No, we already. Because I'm not, I'm, I'm one person. I, I can't pick who's on the board. It's the board is a it's a majority rules board of seven. Well, actually, at the LMAC it is picked so by the, the LMAC is not. We have we we decided to add seven seats to the LMAC and expand that board beyond what it used to be for the sole purpose of allowing each commissioner to pick one person. That's the only board we have in the in all of Manatee County. Right now. We used to have a one per district for um, like the library board, but we since changed that. Uh, how that was structured. And even then, I don't believe it was that individual commissioner getting to pick. It's just you had to be living in that district to be eligible to be picked by the collective board. The LMAC's the only one where we each get one pick. Okay. Well, I was just going to say that, yeah, I mean, wouldn't it be just as easy to get a, a group of, of <coughs> concerned animal people together and no. they decide? Well, I know, I know they decide because no, I, mean, I they applied decide what years ago. Oh, you can only have two. We can only have two citizens on it. The rest of the people are all. Well, they need more citizens because the yes. citizens are the ones taking care of the exactly. personal opinion. Well, while we're talking about the animals, I'm sorry I was late. The traffic got really bad. I heard that you had asked about the heaters. I did. I was told they were turned on. Um. I'm just, and I'll just clarify the fact I was told they were turned on yesterday, so I can't speak beyond what I was told. I was told by staff that they went out there after you emailed me and I emailed Sarah and Julie and specifically asked for confirmation that everything was being taken care of at the shelter. I was told that they sent people out there, they inspected the heaters, they turned the heaters on, and all animals were brought inside with the exception of three husbands. That's what I was told, and I have no reason to believe that they're not telling the truth, and I have no verification one way or the other. I have not been out to the shelter. Um, a few issues with that is one, 
But my biggest thing is, is that I know as I addressed with you in the email, it is the board doesn't get involved in day-to-day -day workings. I understand that. However, when the day-to-day -day workings aren't going well and we're paying people a lot of money to do their jobs, my question becomes every year, and, and, I, and I've only been following this for a couple of years, but I, I know people that have been involved with the animal welfare for over a decade. Every season before it gets hot, and every season before we're getting ready for it to get cold, it, be, it falls on the county, the, the volunteers in this county, to say, hey, have we cleaned the filters for the air conditioners? Did somebody run a check to see if they're running? Same thing for the heaters. Is the electrical ready to go? Are we all set to go? Seems to me that planning, you know, if this is your business and you're getting paid for this, you have a home. There's things you do every year for your home to get it ready for season changes. You take care of your pool, you flush out your air conditioner. There's all kinds of things that we do that are just, we have to do them on a schedule. It took a volunteer yesterday driving from Parrish to bring heaters that she bought with her money to get them to the shelter to then be told by Jen, the manager, that those are not approved for industrial use so they cannot be plugged in. Then yesterday, last night, the county came in and said, well, we checked them, we can use them tomorrow. So last night they brought the dogs in, but there were no heaters on. Today, the heaters that the volunteer bought and brought in are there and on, I know that. But the county owns industrial heaters. We have them. My question is to you and all of the commissioners, where's the accountability for, it's gonna get cold, it's not a, it's not a surprise, it's coming, watch the weather, get the heaters out, get them ready. Why did it take a volunteer buying them with her money and driving them all the way there to get this done? I don't see how that that is a good business plan. Okay. It's a problem. Understood. I don't have an answer for you, but I understand what you're saying. It, it, it was it, a statement, not a and question. I have, I have Again, emails. I don't, I don't oversee animal welfare. You know for a fact we're working very hard to fix animal welfare, we're working very hard to get all of them out of that shelter and we're hoping to get them out of there sooner or later. I've been working incredibly hard to make that happen uh, with the prefabs and the other solutions that we've completely modified the plans to get them out of there. Well, I, understand, I understand what you're saying, but at this point in time, I, I agree. I don't disagree with anything you just said, but I don't have a, a solution to that problem. I can't walk in there and fire people for not turning on heaters. I can't fire anybody in this council, except for you people. Right, but there are people that can, and things, I mean, this isn't something new. I, I mean, the emails, if you go back and pull records, this is an ongoing 10-year issue. Volunteers screaming, saying, the, the heaters aren't on. David Daniels has put emails into you for, for years about the heaters not coming on. We do the same thing when it's hot and the dogs are burning up. Year after year, like, who's taking care of this? I don't disagree with you on your side. In fact, you know, I was on the phone with David. When people started walking in, I was literally on the phone with him right before this meeting started. So I'm well aware, and I put it down. I will follow up with Sarah and Jody and find, Jody and find out what the protocol was, find out where it broke, and how we can make sure it doesn't happen again. That's all I can do. Is I can't do. I can't fix what, ha what did or did not happen yesterday. I can only fix what will or will not happen tomorrow. And so I will follow up and get and, and follow up on the protocol and what the rules were and why they weren't turned on and make sure it doesn't happen. And I believe that you will do that and I appreciate that. But it's gotta be getting old for you because it seems like it's, a big game of cat and mouse. No because <laughs> and at some point to me, it's concerning that people are maintaining their jobs when they stand up and tell lies. And we continue to reward them for that and they get a smack on the hand and don't do it again and year over year it continues to happen like that is a bad policy understood i'll follow thank you and once i get something i'll respond you'll to you email me back thank you and yes, i'm sure you have maintenance people that um randomly check air conditioner filters uh -huh. and no, not, not there but i'll bet you at the county building they get checked oh, and they do 
So that same group, maybe it needs to be put on their list, like in great big red letters, check animal services while you're doing hours, and maybe that might yeah. help. Let me, let me, Something before, I, before I speak out of turn, let me check what the actual protocol is and what we are or are not doing. I, I, I can't speak to that, so let me, let me figure it out. Well, if it's a county building, it's a county building. I mean, somebody oh. checks the air conditioner filters in this air and the library right here, yeah. too. Maybe. Okay. I don't know. I can't verify that either. I know you can, <laughs> but we know I, somebody's assuming, doing I'm it because it feels did, very comfortable. I can't say with 100% certainty. Can you give us an update on what's being done in Bishop? Is anything being done? Yeah, I mean, we have a meeting on Wednesday and we have a meeting on Thursday. Uh, we are working very hard trying to get it done. We spent hours out at Nate's. Uh, meeting with them about their prefabs and their systems. We brought design teams out there. We're finalizing all the work on the infrastructure because before we put anything out, we have to put in plumbing, sewer, electrical. We have to get the entire site plan laid out in terms of how it's going to go. We have to do the procurement. Uh, we've already started procurement on the prefabs to do it. We've already started preliminary site work for the infrastructure. The design team, I believe, was either 60% or close to 90% done last time I asked about a month ago. Uh, we're hoping to be able to start putting the prefabs out there post site work, hopefully in the spring. Once we get those going, they should be able to pop in very quickly uh, with the intention of moving all the dogs out of Palmetto and shutting down Palmetto. So this was something that as of earlier this year, when you guys first showed up at the Rocky Bluff Town Hall, uh, was a 24 month plus process mm -hmm. and we were trying to come up with the rest of the funds to even move it now This is something that we're hoping to resolve by this room. So it, it's it's been very expedited. When you say we who else is working with you on this commissioner wise? Well technical mm -hmm. I'll be clear. I'm not working on this. I don't work on that. I set policy I keep track of other people working on it to make sure I kind of nudge them in the right direction I can't speak to our other commissioners. Are, what? Is anyone else I don't imagine? know because I don't talk to any other commissioners due to sunshine <laughs> and due to the fact that I'm on tape. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I don't know who they are or are not talking to. I spent I so I speak a lot with Sarah and Jody and Charlie Bishop, and I speak a lot with Jacob Procurement and other people to make sure everything's moving on. I keep in touch with them. I was with them out at Nate when we did that tour. I met with the owner of Nate and toured everything. I met with the design team, I met with everything. I've, I've been keeping them nudging almost to a point where they're probably getting sick of me nudging them. They'll get it done just to shut it down. At this point. Good. So, we're working on it. Any non-animal related questions? Animal related? <laughs> Not about animals. So make sure we have a mix no, of questions. You're going to get a mix. Go ahead. So I've been um, working with some people at the county for a couple of years now on the boat ramp issue, predominantly. Um, it's very frustrating as a citizen trying to accomplish something for the people. Uh, a lot of unanswered emails, lies, I'm not going to name names, but as somebody that's trying to be involved in the, in the local government and help uh, other people out, I'm just wondering if you have a suggestion on a better way to get things done. Now this advisory committee, that's kind of got my ears up and I'm thinking maybe we can get something going on that for the waterways to help people have access to the waterways because it's obviously not a priority in this county, even though we continue to bring in a lot of boaters. Pickleball seems to be the thing. And I, I don't have a problem with pickleball, but we have a lot of other things. Between the boaters and the pickleball people. <laughs> 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 but, you know, what would your advice be? Because I've had open communica communications, but I've had return, less returned emails than I have returned phone calls, etc. And and, and been strung out for specific about this one right here, or are you just talking about boat ramps in general? In general. Okay. We know we have a huge deficit in this area. We, we do. I, I would guess you are not gonna find a community in the state of Florida that doesn't have a quote unquote deficit in boat ramps. I mean there's only so many boat ramps you can build, both environmentally speaking and land uh, speaking. Uh, we as a board, as far as I'm aware, are more than open to creating more Boat ramps and availability. I know somewhere on the CIP, I don't know what year it's scheduled, we are working to expand the Fort Tamer boat ramp and, and make that more accessible. We already took some of the land across the street yeah. and turned that into excess parking to Temporary. allow more people to use that. I get yeah. that's not the most convenient one, unless you're 
They don't Unless care. you're water skiing it's or temporary. something. <laughs> it's, you're, not get, you're not going out to the Gulf from out there by the time you put all the way down the river. Well, you'd be surprised who is. I'm I know. Sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, they are. But I'm just saying, that, that, was, that was an opportunity to create more parking and more accessibility, and we took advantage of it. Eventually, that excess parking is going to be the, the Hidden Harbor Park, but we had the ability to use that land in the interim for additional parking. Uh, we are working on expanding that one. Uh, there's still the, the one down at Cortez that's still on the CFE. Um, the one that was being worked on with, I believe that was White and Preston's property. Sunny um, Shores? No, it was the Penn, uh, it's the north side of Cortez. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but, but that one's actively being worked, that's, that's on the CIP. In fact, right. we're approving something on the land use, just it's a, it, it's a CIP element thing we have to approve every year. But it always has a map of the big projects that are part of the CIP, and that's on there. So clearly it's, it's far enough along, uh, admittedly. Uh, there's only so many hours in the day I focus my attention on things like the trails and the housing and the, the budgets and the nonprofits and wraparound services, less so on the boat ramps. Because I know Kevin or Commissioner Van Ostenbridge has made that kind of his focus. So when somebody makes something their focus, I kind of defer it and let them kind of run with it. To the same extent, I'm sure people kind of stand out on the animal welfare because I know I'm focused on it so they can focus their attention someplace else. I don't know where Kevin stands on some of those things, but I know this board has committed to putting funds towards it and the acknowledgement that we do need more boat ramps and more parking and boat ramps. So I think you'll have full support of the board once we can find adequate land where we can actually create it because there is a lot of issues with the seagrass and the, the mangroves. There always and the, will be. I know there that. Always will be. <clears throat> so that's, it's not that's it's, it's, for a lot of them. It's yeah. very easy to build a pickleball course. I can build a pickleball court by putting yeah. some lines on an existing tennis ball, a tennis court, yeah. and I'm done. Building a boat ramp is a whole. I actually brought in a group that I met at a conference who does temporary boat ramps, uh, where they basically can find a place and drop it and have temporary until permanent ones come in. I know we had conversations with them. I forgot the name of that hat. Uh, I don't remember their name, but we did talk to them, even to find temporary solutions for the time being until we come up with permanent. Yeah, I mean, so. we need it north of the river. You know, out wet uh, by the beaches, that that's a whole different issue. It's this whole area that that's I, really I understood. Really and bad. I know we were looking at a place over south of Terracia, over there, like in West Palmetto. We were looking at that. I know at one point we looked at one down here south of 301, but we didn't think that was going to work due to wetlands and some other environmental issues. I know there was that conceptual idea of that one up at the Skyway, but I hear as many things tell me why that could never work than I hear that it's a good idea. I I, I've heard, of, yeah. And I've I'm heard aware. things about the waves and the inability to even have that. Well, that the latest is like that's going to happen when they dredge the um, shipping channel and they're going to use that dredging. And this was from I've heard that too, as well as widening the berth. We're going to have to get rid of all that fill. So, right. so the, the, the point is, I'm 100% on board with it. I'm on board with, I want to get everyone outdoors. I'm the one trying to build more preserves, trying to build a wildlife corridor up from Mayaka to Little Manatee and build bike trails through it. Any place I can get people outdoors right. in Manatee County, access, I'm all yeah. for it. That's, that's <laughs> kind of one of my things. So I'm all for it. I just, I don't know where we stand on it right now. Well, I, I have a lot of communication with them, but it, it's, you know, the same thing. Well, it's it's uh, shallow waters here, this, that, and the other. You know the grass that are that that's going to be an issue anywhere you create a new one in this area it's shallow water that's, and that can't be the only factor involved because you can't bring all these people in and not give them a place to go get on this beautiful have you here, looked so. at or has anybody looked at and this is an honest question i don't know the answer how we stand relative to boat launches coupled with parking compared to similar like sarasota they're not in much better shape because they're taking so. some of theirs away. Like, I'm curious because I know commissioners in every county. If you could tell me, hey, here's a county in you know Citrus County or Pasco County or someplace up in the Panhandle, they've successfully managed to have a per capita number of launches and parking well in excess of us. I'll call them. I will personally. I know commissioners in every single county. I will call them and say, how did <laughs> you do it? How did you get around the environmental? <laughs> they and, you know, because I don't try to reinvent any wheel. If I can come up with another county that's doing anything better than us, I will bring that here. Okay. And I have right here. That's how we've gotten all this affordable housing. It's half dwelling units and other things that Sarasota had. I'm working on stuff that Citrus County is doing. The free transit was something that, that Gainesville was doing. I, I steal stuff from everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, whatever works. It's never easy. It's Just not broken <laughs> <laughs> If I can bring the best thing from every other county here, we'll fight. 
the fault be the best guy. I can, so, I'll happily steal it. I like your idea about temporary because I know every new project they start, they said is four to six years. Correct. And I've talked to several people about that that and, are in and the. These day. are things they and can so literally drop in and they go. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Th yeah. And then with losing all this parking here in Palmetto, it, it just made it a lot worse for everybody real overnight. Why so, can't they open that back up? Well, I they do can. not. They, they can. can. They don't want to. I mean, personally, and it, I live here in Palmetto, and I would much rather see trucks and trailers parked at the base of the bridge than them put up some condo where I've got another 300 uh, plus where cars. Because <laughs> you can't get across the bridge now. I mean, I'm on 4th Street, and I am blocked constantly okay i have to go up to the light go up by the post office to go around to go across the bridge um and it's just the same that's going to bring in like 500 people right there right at the base of the bridge when we're already basically landlocked in i i would love to see that be a park or the boats the trailers um that whole block i mean plus i know that was um Brownsfield, whatever, because that's of the old that's Shell that's Station that's and all of that. Wouldn't that be just easier to make it a parking lot and pave over all that than try and I, let I, people I, live I, on that crowd? Hypothetically, um, but the city of Palmetto CRA bought that land while it was a brownfield and spent the money fixing the brownfield and now has debt that the taxpayers of the city of Palmetto are paying debt service on mm -hmm. and owe, what, $1.8 million or something in debt um, that they can't pay back with a park. Uh, and that's, the city of Palmetto has no tax base to pay back $1.8 million, nor the, the money to pay back the cost of the property. They're not willing to. I had a developer offer them to pay that debt off and keep it as a parking lot and only take the one area where the shell is and build a restaurant and build the apartments over there across from uh, Regatta, which makes more sense. Right. And they, it wasn't even considered. So they're just not open to it. It's 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 not about what's right for Palmetto. It's 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 a oh, lot. Oh, I know. I've had the same that. argument with every one of them. Yeah, I know who. Yeah, your neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there any way I would love to see if we could get a committee going to better focus, more focus regularly I, I can ask. on the waterway I think the they're going to murder access. me if I walk in with my list of fifteen new advisors. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Only two, right? Them anyway. <laughs> Who cares? Oh, I don't mean them. I mean the staff. Oh. I, I don't care what everyone okay else does. Paper, right? uh, I'll look into it, especially if it's broader, um, especially in light of what just happened with the wetlands and with everything else. Maybe if it's a broader waterways and mm -hmm. you know, waterways things like that, where we're going to focus everything from the beaches to the waterways to boat ramps and make yeah. it a little more. I mean, having an advisory board for boat ramps I seems know, a little. I know it's not going to fly, but I get it. Yeah. Um, but making it a bigger, like, hey, everyone sends out mailers saying that they care about our waterways and our environment and all that. Why don't we put an advisory board together and come up with some best practices because this board of county commissioners isn't doing any best practices. With it. Um, so so it, it may be able to be presented on a broader. Yeah, no, I would. So I would I'll, I'll, look it, I'll look into it. I'll add it to my disabled persons and my animal <laughs> services <laughs> advisory boards. And my we're just, and we're, we're just we're trying to help. help. If I'm already doing it, help I'm going to throw, I'm going to throw. You open the books. I'm going to throw rural communities, communities on there too. I mean, it's been there for three years. Why not? Just for you. And one last thing. I just want to thank you. I've been following this commission for a while. And you've been through a lot in the last couple of years, and I appreciate that you have stood you've been up. Been following us for years, didn't you just friend me on Facebook like three days ago? Yeah, I know. <laughs> years. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you for sticking in there um, and trying to do the best job you can by actually listening, going to meetings, advisories, and 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 actually looking at what's going on instead of just no, 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 like the rest of them. It's become very frustrating. So um, hang in there. We appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hi, um, I'm newer here, so I'm going to ask a question. What do you think are the top five issues that the commission has that need to be addressed? The top five? <laughs> the top five. There's five. five. There's five. <laughs> How about just the, the first one? <laughs> top five issues. Is there a context to this? The top five issues that, that are coming in front of the board? Top five issues for all of Manatee County? Well, Manatee or? County. I mean, you guys just did this wonderful video. What are the things that we're really focused on? <laughs> you really look good there, too. I mean, is it the ports? Is it 
the water, the wetlands? Is it no, the uh, the development? Is it the thing you did with the the fees? The what do you call fees? Impact yeah. fees. Impact yeah. fees. Yeah. Um, number one issue in Manatee County and every place else is 100% housing. That, that's that's the number one because it because in the orders I say that not just because it's my one of my main focuses because it transcends housing and affects everything else I'm going to say. Like okay. two through five is, is all going to be affected by housing before anything else. Housing helps us bring teachers in. That affects our quality of school system. Housing keeps people closer to their employment base. It, it minimizes mm -hmm. the impact on our infrastructure and, and keeps some of the traffic mm -hmm. down. How, affordable housing makes it more manageable to bring in workforce, uh, you know, uh, higher wage, more diversified jobs. Like part of the problem, because I'll say that's that's number two, is going to be we have a we do not have a diverse enough workforce here, um, because we can't bring companies in. And then our EDC is great. Sharon's incredible. She has brought in some great companies, but our cost of living is too high here for somebody to move a company down and bring their hundred employees. But we don't have a hundred employees for them, so they can't just bring the C-suite down and, and hire right. skilled work. And I just right before this meeting, I had a, an hour long private town hall with. Uh, State College of Florida's Future Business Leaders of America Club. And I met with them at four o'clock and we had the same discussion. I said, the problem is all of you are very smart people. You're here at one of our great higher education institutions. We've got SCF, we have USF, we have New College, Ringling, MTC. As soon as they graduate, they leave because there's no jobs here and there's no real community here for them to be a part of. So they go to Tampa, say Pete, they go to Orlando, they go to Atlanta. That's where they all need for. Um, we need to keep them. You're not going to keep them here if it costs two thousand dollars a month to rent a crummy apartment way out in Lakewood Ranch where nobody's their age and it takes too long to drive into work right. every day. You're just not. So housing's number one. Bringing in more diversified workforce. So when there is a, a inevitable, I'm not saying inevitable meaning next year. I'm just saying inevitable historically speaking recession. Uh, we're not tied to construction and hospitality, right. and that's what we are. It's all services and tourism and construction. When the housing development stops. All those people go out go out of work, and when people stop traveling because they don't have discretionary income, all the people in the hotels and the restaurants, we need to diversify that. We need to bring in finance. We need to take advantage of the stuff we have. Right now, we have such an amazing opportunity for sports here between right. IMG and Premier and Benderson. We need to be going to find like the regional office for Under Armour or Nike. We need to be finding uh, bigger physical therapy groups and people like we have Gatorade Sweat clinic or whatever they call it at IMG. We need more of that here yeah, um, that to diversify because yeah. those transcend, th those those withstand downturns. And they go into hotels down in Sarasota. They do because we don't have enough hotels near hotel Premier, Sarasota. which is a huge problem because both my kids play travel sports and we're required to stay in hotels. But the hotels are always in that same county and that county collects the bed taxes from right. it. Here, we have no hotels by Premier. So all the state of play at Premier, half the hotels are in Sarasota and they get the bed tax. Right. from it so yeah so i would say housing 100 percent is number one number but they're two. building housing every which way but, but none of it's okay affordable. let me okay let me clarify yeah affordable housing that allows for a mixed income community okay is number one let me clarify because like i said the last thing i want manatee to be is del rico uh or inglewood those are bedroom communities those are okay. communities that have no employment base You've got a couple of Starbucks and some coffee shops and place to go get your right. groceries. Otherwise, it's all houses. As far as I can see, it's rooftops. We can't turn into that. We can't be the bedroom community for for Sarasota and St. Pete and Tampa. Because once you become that, you're there forever. Because you lost all your land to right. do anything else. Uh, so you need that mixed income. You need the ability. You can't have people go play in their favorite restaurant that's closed on Mondays. And it's closed on Mondays because they can't get servers because their right. servers all live in DeSoto County. Right. Where they live in Ruskin. And it, it's not economically feasible to drive all the way down here for 15 bucks an hour on a slow day. So you, you need the mixed income. I don't mean housing in general. I mean, you need to be able to have four to 500 square foot little studios that right. young professionals can live in that don't need more than that, that they can pay 1200 bucks. Uh, and then you, need, then you need the housing for the teachers and the nurses. And so yes. so that's, that's the most important. Second is diversifying the workforce. Uh, the third thing we need to do is fix our infrastructure. Um, yes. Most people would say that's number one, but I think until you fix the housing and put it in the right place, you don't know what infrastructure you need. Uh, that's why I say that's third. Um, there's two ways of fixing infrastructure. One's to build more, two is to use less. 
Um, that's why I pushed to make our transit free. Buses. All of our buses are free now. It's an 18 month pilot, it runs through April of next year. Um, that has increased ridership. I think the most recent one in October was like 56% increase. Wow. Um, those are just cars not on the road and people able to get to work or get to the store uh, for free and keep a couple extra bucks in their pocket. It's also sped up our buses because they don't have to slow down to let people pay. Um, but until you know what, what you need, it's hard to tell with infrastructure. But the problem is we can't afford it. We can't afford to pay. We can't afford to build the infrastructure. We need. The further we go out, the more expensive it is. Every extra foot we go further away from the center is that much more it, it exponentially more expensive the further you get out especially when it comes to utilities uh, and we just can't pay for it because none of those houses none of that development is paying for it so it has to come out of our pockets and we keep lowering taxes good i'm going to make the motions so you lost but, you lost me when you said far away you mean like I mean, if, if the sticks, I, I mean, if, if I can give you 50 units per acre to build with density near your employment where you don't have to get in your car, then you can build 100 units for people to live in on two acres. Two acres all the way out near where Carol lives there gets you six houses. And that's after I rezone it to R3. Right. To build the 100 units, it's going to take 35 acres to oh, build George. the same as with two acres. So and the, and the further you go out, the more you spread out, the more, the more roads you need, the more utilities you need, the, right. the bigger the pipes you need to get to water and utilities out there. It's cost prohibitive. So um, we need infrastructure. We can't afford the infrastructure. And that's just fact. I mean, I know people will, will say we're going to build infrastructure. We're not. The only infrastructure we're building is like eight different roads. The bridges and we've done two separate bonding issuances just to get to those eight roads. Uh, it's Upper Manatee, Moccasin Wallow, 59th, uh, 75th, Lorraine, yeah. Lena. That's it. That's what we're building right now. And that's $350 million, almost four, actually close to $400 million worth of bonding. The 44th was a real. 44th isn't going through that level of bonding. That's coming from, we've basically hoarded, that's part of the problem with the other infrastructure. It's, it's going to be a very important road. Yeah. But yeah. normally, transportation impact fees have to stay in the quadrant where they're collected. Basically okay. 75 here and the river here, whatever quadrant you collect, that's where it stays. We were able to, however it was manipulated, to take all of those impact fees and put it just on that road because it was a regionally important road. Right. Because of that, all the development that was going in, say in Parish, didn't have the impact fees to fix Erie. Okay. And to fix all of the roads up there, it was going to 44. Okay. All the stuff going, the development that was going in in Palmetto, like Artisan Lakes and all that stuff over here in Palmetto and Ellington, instead of going to Canal, and Alan Gillette was going to 44. Yeah. That put everyone else behind the eight ball there and put them even further behind an infrastructure. Now there's less development in some of those areas, like in the Ellington side, we're not collecting enough impact fees to cover the cost to fix it. Whereas we could have fixed it 10 years ago and we started taking those impact fees because right. it was cheaper to build. Now it's twice as expensive to build, but we're not collecting any more impact fees. So we have half the money to, for twice the cost. So where am I now? You asked the big question. Uh, so how <laughs> before where are we doing big, big stick of housing, housing. then employment, then infrastructure. Fourth one to go along with that is utilities. We're we're gonna have a serious problem with water. I heard about that. Uh, I know everyone's sick of hearing me harp on that. Um, no, I just went to a kinda, condo I, meeting. I've kind of taken and we that and budget, ran with it. Yeah. Um, we're gonna run out of water capacity, which is fine. We're not gonna run out. You're never gonna turn on your faucet and, and not yes. have water. Uh, you're going to look at your bank and not have money. Um, like I heard somebody use a quote. I'm going to turn I, on my I, faucet I, and I, not have I water, heard, George. I, I heard a I heard a quote uh, from somebody that Florida is never going to run out of drinkable water. They're just going to run out of affordable water um, mm -hmm. because we're a member of Peace River Water Authority, and Peace River Water Authority has the water capacity and the land to build more water capacity and the permitting to pull more water out of Peace River. We're a member of it. We can buy water from them. Um, that's where Sarasota gets most of their water. That's where Charlotte, DeSoto County, right. uh, all them get their water. It's just very, very expensive to buy that water and build the infrastructure to get that water. Um, at some point, we'll need to do that unless we come up with our own systems. I think we have a, an idea of a way of at least kicking that can down the road for a while. Uh, I went out and toured a facility in Altamont Springs in September. Um, and they're doing some pretty unique stuff to be able to create potable water. So you're hoping to head off the problem? Yes. Which would be nice. Yes. Uh, so infrastructure is, uh, for relative to utilities is very important because we have to get ahead of that growth because we haven't. We haven't built new 
new capacity in a long time. And it gets it's getting more and more expensive. And I don't know, that's one, that's one's kind of a catch all. <laughs> so is there hope? What, what's the hope for the future here? Yeah, the, 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 there's hope. The, the, the hope is if we can start focusing our attention on making sure that growth is going where it's supposed to be, growth is paying for itself, that solves a lot of problems. Because if you put the right housing in the right place, you can attract the right people to live here and stay here, which can attract the right businesses to pay people and diversify our economy. <coughs> you can fix the infrastructure because you can keep people closer to the center and closer to employment bases and the services and keep them off the roads collect enough of impact fees and the, the cost of growth to fix the infrastructure we're behind on in other locations and start working on our water capacity and our utility capacity. It, it's, it is fixed, it's not, we're not, we haven't passed the point of no return. It's just we've passed the point where we don't have another five, 10 years to kick it down the road and wait for some other boards to figure it out. Um, that's gonna be a problem. At some point we'll pass the point of no return. At some point we're gonna get to a point where it's too late to build more water capacity. Uh, we're going to get to a point where too much development has occurred that didn't pay for what it needed to pay for and we're no longer going to have the ability to charge any i can't go and, and quadruple somebody's fees right. 10 years from now because i didn't charge the correct fees this year that that's just not feasible so it is fixable it's just it's something that needs to be fixed in the next one to two to five years not in the next 10 15 20 years if it's not fixed soon there's solutions but it's going to be much more expensive so but those solutions then would um, come under attack by developers because it would come out of their pockets, is that correct? The impact fees do. Yes. So what's the hope that we can get them to pay their fair share of the... I, I don't <laughs> Little know. to none. I, I, I know. I, I've, I've been, I've been like pushing very hard. Uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, I, I've been pushing very hard. I just sort of I know, you did a really good job. Um, we I, really enjoy it. And you know what? The, what you published was fabulous in that it was very detailed explaining how the whole thing worked. So for once, instead of just, you know, telling people without really going into the details, oh, you don't need to understand the details. This is how it works. You went and you, you gave every underlying process that's there, which I think enlightened a lot of people, and they were really thankful for that. So but that's kudos how, to that's you. Yeah, it's it's fixable. Um, it would have been better to fix it five ten years ago, um, but it's still better to fix today than it is five years from now. And yes. ten years from now, it's just going to be so costly. You're going to have no choice but to raise taxes. Yes. Double water rates because you have to buy off Peach River. Still, you're not going to run out of water. Yeah. Roads will eventually. Oh, it may take you longer to get someplace, but roads aren't crumbling on the ground. It's just going to be more expensive and a lower quality of life if we don't fix it sooner rather than later. Well, it didn't seem you had any other support from any of the other commissioners, so, you know, what can we do oh, to, <laughs> to help? <laughs> yes. What can we do to help push this forward? Because you were asking for the 4%, and they were all looking at you rolling their eyes, like, why do we have to talk about this now? They always roll their eyes when he's talking. Yes. Yeah, which is a good thing, because it, it actually says uh, a lot for your character. So, hopefully... I don't know who's bought and paid for it. Seems like everybody is these days, but I don't know what to say. You know, I supported a lot of people who are a big disappointment right now, and I'm not happy about it. I hear you. I think this gentleman back here has a question. Yeah. That that scenario that you I just answered about. like six questions for you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so did everybody else, George. Oh wait, no, yeah. they did. Oh, the follow-up to what you just said about getting work. We're not at a crisis point yet, but what will I didn't, well, well, I didn't say we were on a crisis point. I said we were at a point of no return. Okay. So, but what will it take to 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 put everybody in this point in the same direction on this issue? Because eventually, it will be a crisis. I mean, something. I mean, look what happened with Pine Point. You know, nothing was done for years until I, I agree. And, that, and that's that's actually that's a perfect analogy is every board kicked it down the road because no one wanted to be the board that committed because you saw what happened when we vote if we said we were going to clean that water and dump it in the, the gulf everyone screamed at us we said we're going to put it down a well everyone screamed there was no right answer we were going to get yelled at no matter what it, it finally we just because there was a hole we had no choice but to pick a path and run with it but otherwise the 20 years for the boards ignored it because nobody wants to be on the hook of making a decision and 
a good, it, it's just how it is. I mean, a, a good example of it is, because I've, I've always heard it, look at the dam. The reason our water is the cheapest, arguably in the state, certainly in the region, is because back in the 50s, somebody built that dam. When they put all that money towards building that dam, 100% of those county commissioners got voted out of office. Immediately because of the dam. Everyone said it was a waste of money, you're blowing my tax money, every one of them was voted out. But they made a tough decision, that was correct. Um, the only way this is going to get fixed in a reasonable amount of time before it becomes a problem is to do the hard things. And the issue we have is nobody did the hard things for too long. So it made it tougher. Um, you saw that with the garbage collection. We, kept, we sat on a contract for, what, 13 years and the garbage prices didn't change. Just inflation alone should make the garbage prices higher than, than we had to adjust them to. But it was still, the board said, hey, I don't want to raise garbage prices. Because no previous board did. Same thing with water. We should have tied our water rates to CPI or inflation day one. Like, it should have just been, we don't even have to vote on this. Just increase it based on inflation. We'll call it a day. Instead, we kept water rates flat for years and years and years. But cost of chemicals, cost of treatment kept going up. Cost of maintenance kept going up because the pipes and the underlying infrastructure is getting older and older. That's why pipes fall off bridges going out to the beach because nobody, we don't have the, the funds to handle the maintenance of the infrastructure we have. So what it's gonna to take to fix it is we're going to just have to make the tough decision. Well, that just seems to be the pattern here because I mean, there'd be you know, a lot of different issues. I think about the parking issue on the island or traffic, but however you want to define that, it. That, that's a new thing. But it was, a, it was something that was ignored for as long as I've been here, 20, almost 20 years, you know, as, as more tourism develops, there was, I mean, I, I, I say that's a lot. I'm not gonna say it's ignored. Some things just don't have a solution. I mean, it, it just doesn't. How it, the only way you can fix that again is with the third lane on the bridge. Which, yeah. Until we get a new bridge, you aren't gonna build a third lane on an existing bridge that wasn't past capacity. We are actively talking to DOT to make sure we get a third lane on the bridge. And once we do that, it can be a dedicated transit slash uh, emergency vehicle lane, which will allow for real park and ride on the mainland side because now you can actually get people back and forth in a timely manner. Um, as for as for the fix, it's just going to take people to, to do it. I mean, we haven't increased impact fees in eight years. They weren't 100 percent eight years ago, so we're not even dealing with increasing existing numbers. We're increasing a percentage of, of dated numbers. Uh, same thing with facility investment fees. They're way behind that. The facility investment fees are basically impact fees, but for water and utilities. Um, those are way behind as well. And that's what covers the cost of the new expansion and, and um, basically quantity and capacity of water. So um, that's what it's gonna take. It's gonna take a board that just says enough's enough. You know, we're. Don't accuse me of being a, a communist because I push for affordable housing and subsidize people's affordable housing. Well, you're over there subsidizing twice as much for, for market rate housing. That, that's, that's asinine. It doesn't make sense. There's a cost to doing business. It costs what it costs. Plus, I mean, I don't know if anybody's tried to do this, but there's a case to be made with developers that it's in their best interest. I made that. To pay their, have you made that yes. case? I, I made the case both in my substack and I made the case in the last town hall where I said, look, the pushback is, I don't want to pay another fifteen thousand dollars in impact fees as a developer. My argument is, if I take all your fifteen thousand dollars for all your houses and go out and build you a nice new park near there and build a new library <coughs> and widen the roads, <coughs> excuse me, before you, the people actually move into your neighborhood, people will pay more for those houses because now they're not moving into congestion. Now they're moving next to a park. Now they're moving where they have a library. Now some of our impact fees go to law enforcement and go to, to public safety, like EMS stations. If I can get all that in ahead of time because people are paying the appropriate impact, I bet you if I increase your impact fees to 15,000, I'm supposed to increase them, you're probably gonna sell your house for $25,000 more because you're selling it into a better community that's already fit out. You're gonna profit from this. But like I said in the Substack, the issue is they know all of you and everyone out there are gonna scream at me and say, the traffic's terrible. It took me an hour to get here so I couldn't come and talk about animal shelters. and. We're gonna fix your roads. So you're, if, if your logic as a developer is, they're gonna build the roads anyway. They're gonna build the parks anyway. Like we're building the parish downtown park. That's not coming from impact fees. We don't have enough impact fees. That's coming from, from your money. That's coming from my money. That's coming from general funds. 
but they could sell on that park. We just bonded $400 million in the past 24 months entirely for infrastructure. That's paid back entirely from general funds. Every taxpayer who lives here has to not only pay the debt service on $400 million, but has to pay the principal on it at some point in time. If they know we're gonna build the roads anyway, and we're gonna build the parks anyway, and we're gonna build the libraries anyway, and they're gonna get the pop in value, why pay the $15,000 impact fees to get that value pop if we're gonna give it to them anyway? That's the problem. And there's a truth to that, because I can't tell all of you, I can't tell 400,000 people, I'm not building you another damn road, I'm not building you another library, I'm not building you another park, until we increase impact fees. They know that's not true. You're not gonna let me sit here and not build another park or library or road. Plus, plus, plus the current taxpayers, I mean, you can never pay for what's needed with all the growth, right? No, you'll never, it'll never. At some point, taxes will have to go up. You're never gonna pay the principal. It's the same thing with federal government. Like everyone, like you keep just printing more and more money. It's it's the same thing. We sit here and yell about what Biden does up there. It, it's not meaningfully different. It's just on smaller scale. Um, instead of four trillion dollars, it's four hundred million dollars. At some point, someone has to pay it back. And if it's not you, it's going to be your grandkids. I'm glad I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think our I don't think that's our angle is hoping that we die before we have to pay this back. I don't think that's a good I don't think that's a good long term strategy for the community. <laughs> Well, it just, what you're saying just sounds so grim. It's not, though. It's I not grim. It's just, it's factual. I mean, I've been here for 60 years. I have watched dirt roads turn into brick roads to turn into paved roads to traffic that is just unbelievable. You can't even drive through Palmetto between 4 and 6 o'clock. Oh, I, don't, I don't disagree. And that's a problem in a lot of places. Again, because they got rid of concurrency a long time ago in the state of Florida and switch it to impact fees, which I agree with. I agree with the concept of impact fees over con concurrency if they're charged properly. Uh, current concurrency was a, a real pain, but it served its purpose because you weren't allowed to even build the house until you built the lane if you were the, the last one through the door. Um, it wasn't fair, it wasn't a fair structure. Impact fees are a much fairer structure, but you have to be able to assess them properly and charge them properly and, and spend them properly. Uh, but I don't disagree. I, I, grew, up in, I grew up in Sarasota. When I grew up, I used to ride my bike literally down the middle of Fruitville Road because it was one lane each way. That was Fruitville back then. And there were cow pastures on the side of Fruitville when I was growing up there. Now you go there, it's six lanes plus a middle turn lane, and it's wall to wall car. Oh, I remember going to the beach, it was a dirt road. Well, it's, I mean, well, <laughs> if you went down Stair Road 70, eventually you'd hit yeah. dirt. I mean, oh, yeah. We would go down from I get lost until we got to the Walmart. That's as far as I went on Stair Road 70. I'm like, all right, I'm at the Walmart. I have no reason to be yeah. any further. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. That was the end of the world, I, though. But, but things change, and that's okay. Yes. Things can change. I, I fully support change and growth. I just think there's a right way and a wrong way, and if you insist on the right way, people will do it. That's, that's how the world works. If you say, look, I'm not gonna let you keep doing this over here, but I'm gonna let you build, I'm not stopping, but you gotta build it over here where it makes sense. I'm going to let you build, but you just have to pay your share. And if you're not good enough, and, and your business plan isn't smart enough to pay what it actually costs, then don't build, I'm sorry. It's not my job yeah. to, cre to allow you to build. It's my, it, it's my job to give you the opportunity that's it. You don't have a right to build houses. You have an opportunity to build houses, but that opportunity has a cost associated. Like I said in the Substack, we don't require the we don't require the window makers and the door makers and the, the, the cabinet makers to fix their prices because it's inconvenient for a home builder to have to pay the going rate for windows. Why why are the taxpayers in Madison County the only people that are supposed to subsidize and cap our, and have price control? Like the same people, and look, I'm 100% against rent control, it's a terrible idea, but the same people who, who scream and yell about how, how terrible and socialist rent control is are the people who think we should have fee control for impact fees, and it's not fair to, to charge what the cost of the growth is. It's just, that's factually incorrect, and it's gonna take people on this board saying, no, enough's enough. We're not stopping you from building, but you gotta pay what it costs to build. And if you don't wanna pay, then don't build. That's your call, I don't care. I'm not stopping you from building, I'm just charging you what it costs. So we need to Take evaluate away. who we're voting for a little better. We need leadership. That's what we need. What's that? We need leadership instead of popularity. So it's, it's not they're not going to be happy about doing the right thing and they may not get a second term, but at least they'll set a precedent for doing the right thing. Maybe somebody will catch on. Usually doesn't though. So, so let's do the wrong thing and just, you know, have them sponsor and pay for our our <coughs> Our term, our term there. <laughs>
you know, so yes, you're, you're popular and you make good movies, but you know, are you doing the right thing for the community? And you're not. They're not doing the right thing. They're just doing what's good for them, and that's very short-sighted. And I didn't mean to take his, he's got his hand up, so. That's okay, I already know the question. <laughs> oh, you know the question, okay, so. It, it's the same me. when you've asked me 47 times on Facebook. They did that to me. Yeah, I, and I still haven't got an answer for that yet. So I wanted to ask you this. On March 15th, when you traveled up to Tallahassee and spoke before one of the committees, expressing your support for the unanimous vote that the county commission did in court with building with uh, setting up the parking garage in Holmes Beach. But then six months later at the Lakewood Ranch Republican Club, you had stated that it is not, gov in so many ways you said it's not government's job to circumnavigate, you know, local government. But yet you had literally said at that same committee that sometimes it takes, you know, having to supersede local government to get certain things done. So my question to you is, what changed then compared to when you went before the Lakewood Ranch Republican Club? Because if you ask me, I'm a person that lives on the mainland, and we would love to go to the beach. We, we haven't been in a while, because having to circle around constantly is something that really isn't, you know, it, isn't, it, isn't, it just isn't right, it isn't reasonable. And so why not a common sense approach to trying to fix the problem? Yes, it will be a headache for maybe 13 to 12 months, but in the long term, I think that, you know, that gives more beach access. So you can nod your head all you like, but I'm just thinking about my children. I'm thinking about my wife's young cousins who are just coming out of school and who want to literally uproot and leave this community and go elsewhere. But I decided to simply step up and say, you know, it's your right to go, but why not stay here? And that's part of the reasons why I decided to file to run for Commissioner Cruz's seat. Mm -hmm. Because I believe that we need options. I believe that we deserve change. But most importantly, you know, I'll admit in front of all these, in front of all of you, I voted for Commissioner Cruz the first time around. My wife and I did too. But in the end, we didn't get exactly what we expected. So that's why I stood up. It's nothing personal to you, it's business. But at the end of the day, we need better leadership. We need better people up there who actually want to do the job. Who Are you actually. Okay? <laughs> oh, no, I'm not. I just want to be clear. Uh, I, no, I, I want to let him finish before I remind him he's in a county building and it's literally unethical and against it's against campaign laws to even campaign inside this building. And I notice you're wearing your campaign button, by the way. And your point is? My point is it's literally against campaign laws but in I'm the not state campaign. of Florida. You literally just announced your file to run against me and you're telling everyone your platform. But please I'm not continue. It's on camera. Platform, but it's also very, it's okay, also please, public knowledge. Please but, Back to my question. My question is, what is no, changed? No, finish your campaign. No, I'm asking, I'm back to my question. What changed from March 15th to your time at the Lakewood Ranch Republican Club? I'm, I'm just interested. Uh -huh. No, I'll help you answer. I'll tell you what changed. First off, I, I'm sure I did homework over these those few months, much like you did. Because as you're saying here, you're fully in support of the parking garage. Yeah. You just said how your kids and your grandkids and your aunt's kids all need parking and you're sick of driving around. Back in January, uh, when the delegation proposed it, you jumped on the Save AMI Cities Facebook page and said that you fully supported the island's home rule and that you were fundamentally against the parking garage. I never so, said so that. I literally have the screenshot of it. So I never uh, said I was against it. Okay, but you said you were for their home rule. So yeah, which is a very vague answer, like you are. Oh, so okay, so. You're, Okay, that's fine. If you want to, that's how you're going to handle it. There's many different meetings. Okay, I, I'm answering your question. Please, this is my tone. Go ahead. In March, I spoke up in Tallahassee at the request of Representative Robinson and clearly stated that I was for his bill, which I was and still am. And I've said that to Mayor Titsworth and to everyone even on the Anna Maria uh, Island Town Halls. Because I said, and in fact, it's in the newspaper. In fact, it was in the newspaper back in the spring, immediately following that meeting in Tallahassee when people from the Island Papers reached out to me where I said it provides a carrot rather than a stick, uh, or a stick rather than a carrot, because it incentivizes Holmes Beach to create parking to avoid the parking garage. I went out 
on a tour with Mayor Titsworth and the police chief. We toured all of their parking. Uh, they created over 1,200 parking spaces since that bill was filed in, for the sole intent of avoiding a parking garage. Simultaneously, back in March when the bill was filed and I spoke in Tallahassee, it was proposed to me and to the board that this was going to be the opportunity to build a parking garage literally anywhere that the county owns property on the island. Uh, I actively talked to people about buying an old bank branch because that was right next to a Publix and a drugstore and a place where parking would make a little bit more sense. I beg your um, pardon. This yeah. sort of turned into a political debate, so we're leaving. Yeah. Right. So at the time when I spoke, it was supposed to be anywhere on the island. Now I'm told it's directly on top of the beach, uh, which was not what it was when I first spoke about it. When I first spoke about it, I was told it was 1,500 new parking spaces. Now it's 900 parking spaces being built on top of over 400 parking spaces, so it's only 480 new parking spaces. So to say there was a flip-flop based upon a bill and a change of heart is twofold uh, incorrect. One, when I first spoke about it, it was 1,500 parking spaces near a commercial strip center. Now it's 400 and something new parking spaces directly on top of the beach. It's a fundamentally different project than when I first spoke about it in March. Second, I do my homework in all facets of everything I do. You can read my subsects and see how much effort I put into doing my homework. So I went out and met with the mayor, toured all of the parking. I know there's 299 parking spaces going into a church, another 50 being leased out from another church. They did 275 additional parking spaces by repurposing right-of-ways and created 1,280 something new parking spaces, which is three times more parking spaces than that parking garage is going to create at no cost to the taxpayer and no burden to anyone who's going to lose 400 plus parking spaces for 18 to 24 months. Not to mention, I said literally from day one, uh, even when I was talking to people like Representative Robinson at the time of the bill, I said, I'm for it in principle, but it, the devil is in the details. And I said that in the newspaper back in, I think, March or April. I think it was the, either the Sun or the Islander. I said, someone's got to show me where the money's coming from and why this makes sense to put more people on this island. When we had the conversation about the parking garage a few months ago, I didn't say 100% no to a parking garage. I said, this is not practical relative to the dollars we have because I was told by some of my fellow commissioners it was the number one priority for parking garages more so than a collapsing parking garage downtown that has to be fixed because we're losing that parking garage more so than the parking garage at the convention center where we're building new space and don't have parking more so than the parking at premier none of that is factually correct this has become political it has nothing to do with reality it has nothing to do with best use of taxpayer dollar it has to do with the politics of building a parking garage to prove that you can so to say the difference between what I said in March and what I said recently is completely asinine because the proposal in March is completely different than the proposal today. And from day one, I said the intent of this bill and my reason for supporting it is to get Holmes Beach to do something, which Holmes Beach, Holmes Beach did. So I fully support Will putting that bill in because it accomplished what it needed to accomplish and it no longer needs to accomplish anything further. But with that being said, can you definitely say that knowing all of these details now, just as you've expressed to all of us, did you know all of this when you cast your vote with the rest of the other commissioners? For what? For the garage. Did you also know all of these things that you just basically said before you, before we, you we, cast we, your vote? We, we passed that vote to send that letter to Tallahassee before I even spoke at Tallahassee. It was within weeks of him passing the bill. It's when it still was... A park it literally stated we can build on any county owned property in the entirety of Holmes Beach. And the proposal to us by staff that was being presented was A, we had the funds available, and B, it was 1,500 new parking spaces. And it was before I went out and met with the mayor. And it was before the mayor even secured all that parking. She was just finding out about the bill and we passed that as well. And the vote was to sign a letter in support of Will Robinson's bill, which again, I do support his bill because it created 1,500 or 1,200 new parking spaces which is way more than we're going to uh, create with $35 million of taxpayer funds. Then why did you say in front of the Lakewood Ranch Republican Club that you didn't? Didn't what? That you didn't support the garage. Because I don't support the garage now because we don't have the money for it because we have to build a downtown parking garage and it's only 400 new parking spaces and it's on top of a beach. I don't support that parking garage there. Like I said, I looked into buying the old bank branch, which was next to a retail strip center as soon as you walk onto the island. 
which would have kept it away from the beach, it would have kept the concession in place, it would have been built on top of not existing parking. So I don't support the garage in its current format, and I clarified that in a work session when I flat out said, I don't support this garage in this current format. But still, it just... You can keep sounds, spinning it in it circles, you're just wrong. Talking at the same you're, time. you're just wrong. George, George, if I might, I'm not running for office, so I don't have a stake in this other than being a taxpayer. I was full of the parking garage before I was against it. Why? Because facts have changed on the ground. I didn't need Commissioner Cruz to tell me that. At that time, I went up to Tallahassee the same time, the same week he was. I met with Representative Robinson. I supported fully what he was trying to do right there. The facts on the ground change. I, I have talked to the mayor. Have you spoken with the mayor? The police chief invited me a couple weeks ago to come out and look around and tell me the same thing that he told Commissioner Cruz. The same thing. Have you accepted that invitation? Sir, sir, I did. Sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. This is me. These folks know me. I'm not quite no, spoken no, like you. Right. <laughs> but, but, but to put it straight, I was for it before I was against it, but the facts have changed. It's a crazy waste of money. The mayor and the folks out there at Holmes Beach have done an incredible job to create more parking at far less money out of my pocket, in your pocket, sir. Sir. He did the right thing. I, the the boat was the right thing. Place. I'm finished, I'm finished. You're never coming back to the library. <laughs> they like me I, I, just, I get very irritated when I hear things over and over again. And I talk to you about this and you don't listen to me, you don't listen to Commissioner Cruz. Just listen, well, just let's, listen. Let's answer other questions then. Right. Let's move it on. Else, no, I'm good for now. <laughs> no, I'm still going to put it up there, George. Sorry. We were talking about the rating of our issues and all in right. Manatee County. Um, I think that we really just need to be honest and not ignore the elephant in the room. And I just personally feel that the citizens, those of us who have kept an eye on things, I, I think are... Uh, Number one issue we're having is a lot to do with accountability, civility. What is it? What's the words, people? ACE, accountability, 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 accountability and ethics. I can't even remember them anymore. You know, it's like it doesn't exist. And ethics. Accountability. Civility. Civility and ethics, yeah. right? Yeah. Absolutely. We have to admit, those of us who have followed this for a while, that um, Carl Hyacinth is speaking at the Eco Summit. If yeah, you're familiar with Carl I, I, was, I was actually going to go to that, but I've got like 40 other things during yeah. this day. Yeah, which Carl, if you've ever read any Carl Hyacinth, he really needs His to books use. books are weird. Yeah, he, he, he could. <laughs> and uh, Craig, Craig Pitt. He wrote the ones like Chomp and Flush and all that. Oh, yeah. okay. And um, Craig Pittman is also going to be speaking that yeah, same I know. night. I and um, I, I think we do have a little issue with accountability, civility, yeah. and ethics. Yes. I yes. have, you know, I've, I'm a old lady according to Mike Ron and um, <laughs> I've lived here in Bradenton for over 30 years and it was my bedroom community. I had a job in St. Petersburg. I could be on a plane in Tampa in 45 minutes after dropping my kids off at the daycare. Um, I kept my horse in Parrish where Covered Bridge Estates is now and there were never any covered bridges there, by the way. Yeah. Um, ancient croaks, I mean ancient oaks that used to be there. And um, now I'm out in Mayaka. And you know, we've all been following this for a while and we've got a problem there. We've got a problem. And if somebody asked me what would be one of our pr first issues that we have in Manatee County, when we say that housing, yes, housing dribbles down into, right, all of our other issues. But if we don't have What's the three words again? Accountability, accountability, accountability civility, civility, and, and ethics. Ethics, ethics. How are we going to trust and move forward with those other things? Well, right? that's what I was saying is we have to start paying better attention to who hey, we put we're in taking, those chairs. Let's take the blame, people. Yeah. Where does it start? Well, with us, because we're right. not paying attention to now, who we're putting but, in there. But, but, but no. remember that in some, no. well, okay, in some confusions of that, I my shtick is i walk up to people and i say where are you from how's your mama what district do you live in who's your your district commissioner okay we did a lot with that redistricting that changed a lot of things it was very confusing and i was there for virtually every single meeting in one way shape or form on that redistricting 
And there was shade in that. There's been shade in everything we've done. So I think that is the number one thing that we have to look at in this county. And how do we take our responsibility for that? And how do we enforce that? I mean, right now we've got how many county commissioners and former county commissioners are currently under investigation? I don't understand the concept of this, especially this latest one, where <coughs> when we issue a text, when, we, when, when texting was invented, yeah. that anybody didn't say, you know, <laughs> this could lead to bad things. We might want to have a, a, a public, public a public records, a way of gathering these things. So how did our county go for how many years that we hand out county cell phones to people with okay. texting abilities and not one person thought, you know, no good may come from this. I, I, I could tell you sort of the answer to that. Because um, Sarasota Because, because oh, Sarasota got in trouble for it, Venice got in trouble for it, North Fork got... Because once we started handing out iPhones, which was newer, um, iPhones weren't the default handout for a while, um, as long as you're texting another iPhone, which meant somebody else within right. the county, for instance, it doesn't go through SMS, it doesn't go through the phone carrier, it goes through an app on Apple. Mm -hmm. And so we were unable to capture those texts, or even know those texts were happening. If I, if I texted someone with an Android, it would get captured. And so when they went to pull everyone's text message, they would see text messages. because we identified that went, the problem then. Correct. And we, and we did, and so we turned off all texting because we couldn't stop, Apple wouldn't turn over the text. And so our only option was to turn off text. We've since been able to turn back on because now there's new software because people always find solutions to things. So we have software that does in fact capture. So our texts now go out, even iPhone to iPhone through SMS so that they can capture the text. It's been fixed. Same, again, same thing happened in Sarasota, Venice, Northport, I think Venice. But we have a commissioner that is intentionally refusing. I cannot to speak to because I, I, he doesn't want records. I, I've never heard. And, and how does I, he I didn't refuse? Know that. I've never heard that before. How do you what? How does it he? How do we? How do we? I know it's possible. I'm saying I've never heard of somebody phone. refusing a county. You phone. can right. Okay. You don't. You don't refuse it. You just you use your don't use personal it. phone. If you yeah, don't you use take. the business phone, then they can't get the records, which right. is like what. You gotta, be, you gotta be good if you bet. Come on. But I mean, we have <laughs> kids. We don't hand our kids out a phone and don't put things on it to keep them from. You know, reading a library book, or I or mean, port, or something. So, or something. Or something. Yeah. So, <laughs> one of mine. But, but kids always find a way around everything, and so do apparently, so apparently. But okay, so so basically, what I'm saying is that that we know we have some issues. We have been in issuedom for the last. Yeah, but Barfield goes after everybody for everything, both school district, county, And, and we pay everywhere. for it. And we That's, end up paying for it because... Yeah, we keep him in business. I get it. Okay. And, and because we and don't... We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't be, we're, we're small. I mean, if there was he, he's gotten all this money from the airport. He wouldn't be doing so. it because... <laughs> Yeah, he's statewide. He's statewide. He's statewide. Who are we talking about? He's the president of the ACLU from the state of Florida. He's the president of the ACLU from the state of Florida. He looks into sunshine violations. Yeah. Right. So if people weren't doing bad things for him to win a lawsuit, then he wouldn't get money. Or they just settle sometimes because it's cheaper to settle than it is to continue to fight. I doubt it. Not well, I think that, no, that's, 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 almost, that's almost entirely yes. how it ends up. Absolutely. Yes, almost yes. hundred, almost hundred percent. I, in the school district, I know it is. Yeah, for a fact. It, it's almost hundred percent. Almost hundred percent of the time, it's through a settlement. So, is he doing this as a form of almost legal blackmail? Is that what? No, that like, that? no, it's accountability. No. It's, it's, it's accountability, civility, and ethics. Uh, uh, but, but, but the politician so, will I, I call it legal but, blackmail. Uh, I think we're still. I think Carol was still halfway through her. Yeah. Oh. So anyway, so we have these issues and we have a tremendous amount of investigations going on. Um, we've recalled our former commissioner back into the fold uh, regarding the uh, John Mast. Uh, oh, oh I, when you said recall, we don't have well, No, we don't have recall. Okay. We're working on that though too. But so we've come up with all of these, you know, and I, I, I don't think that... Uh, I, I would like to split the blame, okay? 
if if we have an animal services citizens advisory committee and you know they're not meeting or they're not being heard by the commissioners that's why one thing i'm i i would like to see is if we're going to be discussing affordable housing i want the chairman of the citizens advisory board for affordable housing up there not glenn because glenn's a citizen i mean he's on it but you know you need to have a front man for those I, things I, our animal I, services citizens I, advisory I, committee I, should have been called in when we I, had this problem with the with when what they told me is that they stopped meeting because the board wasn't paying attention to them. I was at an LMAC meeting where the quote was given, well, you people better not do that because the Board of County Commissioners is going to get mad at you and then they won't approve anything that you want. Mm -hmm. And we don't, we don't run those meetings. Where's the Citizens Advisory Committee, but it's the county show. The reason that, as you suggested about the waterways, people and all that, the reason that the Citizens Advisory Committee should work better and should be utilized better and should be taken a little bit more seriously is because it gives us an avenue with having a county commissioner liaison on the board that, that has an interest in that, um, using county services and staff, and it, they can be really effective. And here we're sitting in a community that we have retirees that have wealth of knowledge if you want to tell us how you did it up north, join a Citizens Advisory Committee because you might bring some good ideas in the community. But I think that we could possibly take some steps. We have an integrity problem. We have a severe integrity problem. And you know what, what happened to me as a citizen. I, I go to a board meeting to speak as a citizen. You know, I mean, you guys could campaign up on the dais and you could have wonderful videos made of how our agricultural land is just so awesome and all that kind of stuff. I'm just going there as a citizen. What I said, you know what happened. What I said was how you vote is going to affect how we vote. How is that a, a, a subversive statement or a, or a off topic issue. I, then Michael Barfield, then Michael Barfield walked into stuff. that meeting and said the same exact thing that I said, and nobody said a word. Yeah. And people said, well, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of time to go down there and talk to people who are on their cell phones during the meeting, texting. So why are we doing that? because this is how it's supposed to work, okay? This is how it's supposed to work. We're supposed to have responsibilities, and then when we fulfill our responsibilities and exercise our rights, you have a job to do too. So how do we get through this divide that we're having? No matter what happens, we, are, we need to address the sin, not the sinner, because hey, stuff you don't know until you walk in somebody else's shoes how things come about. And we don't know it all, and neither does he or him. Or you. But you're loud. And, and that's something we want to do. We want to come together with those things. It's not going to help by kicking cans down roads or accusing other people of kicking cans down roads. What do we want? We want to be educated, informed, and involved citizens. So that's the way that we improve our integrity. Investigations aren't getting us anywhere. Investigations are not improving behaviors. Investigations are not costing anything else but money right now. But the problem is, Carol, is that the only mechanism voters have is at the ballot box, and it only comes once every four years. And by that time, you have pretty much ravaged, and you spend the next four, the next eight years straightening out yes. I want to walk into this next four years I don't want to walk into this next four years going all we're going to do is try and straighten up what happened in the last four years mm -hmm. and then what's going to happen George oh then we're going to get yelled at right so I don't want to go too much further but what I'm saying is we've asked for things I don't know um, we if, if familiarity with process and procedure um, Lee Washington and I talked about the Citizens Academy starting up so I people understand. I already, I already started that conversation. Um, you see people that are wanting to revive a Citizens Advisory 
create one. I think we need to have that, that putting that, that in us. It's a, in, in increasing the integrity and the accountability and civility and ethics. That's the number one problem that's in Manatee County the, right now. Everything else falls from that. And we've got to make some improvements on that. Mm -hmm. And we appreciate what you're doing. Um, we appreciate what everybody's doing. But if we keep ignoring the biggest elephant in the room, we're not going to accomplish any of the other things. We, we need to find a way to make that right. And I'm asking all of you. Yeah. We need representation that's going to represent us. I actually tried to get onto a library advisory uh, council. Good. Good. And I was told that I'm not eligible because I don't live in Palmetto and I don't live in home, uh, is it Holmes Beach and the Beach People? And I'm not a mother with a child currently in school. You, you didn't fit any of the categories. I didn't fit any of the categories. Did you send an email about that? I did. Okay. I like to email when I don't like things. So. Look at look at who. Um, and I got nowhere. We've, we've had people that have been nominated for the Planning Commission um, that should be serving on the Planning Commission and they don't make it every time. And I did a great research into citizens advisory committees before I I applied for and was appointed to the LMAC. And yes, that's what I found. So uh, there's a there's a historic commission what is it, historic preservation board. They meet this Monday coming up. They're approving their meeting minutes from the last time they met, which is when which was in July. I have the that's, same that's problem. How, that's how some boards work. I they mean, never publish. Well, no, the that's agenda. how some boards don't work. I, I'm <laughs> saying they're county, they're literal counties. I mean, the Affordable Housing Board, just to use an example, because I was now on maybe, since way before I was even a commissioner, meets every month in Manatee County. That one re is required to do things for us to get millions of dollars of funding. Right. There are counties in this state where that board meets once a year. Once. They meet yeah, one time. Not, they meet, I'm, I'm, I'm it's using, not I'm, how I'm good using, you are; it's okay. how much better you are than I'm anybody not, else. Not, that's I'm exactly implying, what we've got us into this problem. I'm not implying that, Carol. My point was, different boards meet at different intervals depending on need. It doesn't make sense. Like we contemplated switching the affordable housing board to every other month because half the time we're sitting there twiddling our thumbs because there's only so much to do. So some boards don't require monthly meetings. Some boards require citizen, the, the children's services board meets for hours and hours and hours all the time um, because they require a lot more work. And they have money to work with. They have other, boards, other boards we have meet twice a year. Some boards meet quarterly. I'm on the Gulf Consortium Board, which handles the BP funding uh, from the oil spill. We meet four times a year. I'm on the board for Florida Association of Counties. That's an important board that does a lot of, you know, pushing for policy up in Tallahassee and dictates things for all the counties. We meet four times a year. These are big boards. We just consolidate them into a reasonable amount based on available time of everybody and, and real needs. So we're not just spinning our wheels and looking like we're pushing paper. You don't need to meet just to meet. So some boards don't need to meet every month. Some boards do. And it's at the board's discretion and the staff's discretion who's overseeing it, how much they feel is an adequate amount of time to accomplish their goals for the year. So when we have an issue, let's take a simple one because everybody likes dogs. May we have your attention, please? The Palmetto Branch Library will be closing in 30 minutes. So when we had the issue with the animal services and all this kind of stuff, why weren't they referred to or, we or called in? By Jody Chris. Mm -hmm. They were what? We were all fired right. by Jody but Chris. I'm talking about the Animal Services the Citizens Advisory Committee. Why were they not brought into the situation? Well, we, we, we don't have the advisory board. We don't oh, have the advisory Because they just They don't here. talk to us. No, nobody talks. We never got an explanation. No, just we don't need you anymore. Well, I understand that things turn slowly. My, I'm on the LMAC thing. We've been paying our extra money for our property taxes. Do you know how much property we've purchased so far? Zip. Maybe you should get your board in gear. Um, I tried to, but it apparently is run by um, the county, not the citizens. Oh, yeah. I just want to know about the ACE thing that she brought up. Who decides, who nominates people for those awards and, and, and who hands it out? 
Uh, you don't we, know we because don't. you guys make a big deal about it at your meetings when they're when they're given out. So who? We don't make a big deal. The, 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 direct, the directors, the administrator, hand them out the amount. We can't get one, nor can we. The directors give them one, so. of the departments hand uh -huh. them out. Yes. Oh, that's cute. Uh -huh. Okay, that's adorable. I have a question. Yeah. You're yeah. a county commissioner at large. Correct. So all of the other county commissioners that have districts have also an org chart and they're responsible directly for some things? Is no. that not the... No, no they're nobody... not responsible for anything. So um, how does that work? No, we have seven county commissioners. In okay. the state of Florida, if you're not a chartered county, which we are not a chartered county, you have two options. Okay. One option you have to have is you have to have five districts and each district has to have a commissioner. Okay. Only that district votes on that commissioner and that, that, that commissioner has to live in that district. Okay. If you're not chartered, you have to have those five. You have the option to have two additional at large. Those people go to any place in the county and everyone in the county votes for them. I'm one of them Right. for that. There's no difference. Nobody nobody has more or less power between these two. Nobody has org charts. So anybody can approach you, whereas if I have a problem, I should go to, I think Mike Ron is my commissioner, and tell them what my problem is. Here's, here's the part of the problem with district stuff, the, the pros and cons is, yes, the short answer would be yes. That, that's, your, that's your best bet. Uh, the reality is everybody up there has to vote on everything. So somebody out who represents the island is voting on developments in Lakewood Ranch. Uh, people who live north of the river are determining how much money we're going to spend on a park near the airport. So in theory, all commissioners should be responsive to all people who reach out to them. And in reality, you should reach out, you should be responsive to somebody regardless of where they live, what party affiliation they are, whether or not they voted for you, if you're actually doing your job properly. Um, you can have your own ideology when you're making votes, but you shouldn't just flat out ignore people. But how could you but, 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 cover all that? Well, I cover all of that. Um, yes, your default would be your district commissioner. That's where their focus is supposed to be, is within that district. Um, but we do have two at-large commissioners. And so at any point in time, I tell everybody, you can always reach out, whether or not you can get in touch with your district commissioner, or maybe there's an issue with it, or maybe they're tied up with something. Like I just worked with some people out in El Conquistador. That's somebody's district. Every, by definition, everything I do is somebody's district. Right. Because I don't have a district. I'm standing in Commissioner Ballard's district right now, speaking with people that mostly live in Commissioner Ballard's And that's fine. Nobody that's cares. Problem. Yes. <laughs> uh, but I'm saying, when, when they needed something in El Conquistador, they reached out to me. Okay. Uh, and it's fixed. I mean, we actually got the, the Stop signs up last Wednesday. Um, so you can reach out to me, you can reach out to Commissioner Beard, who's the other at large, you can reach out to your district commissioner. In theory, you can reach out to any other commissioner if you want. Um, there's if no I difference. If I have a library issue, for example, that's something I've been looking at. I would libraries. reach out to me. To you. <laughs> yeah, I would too. <laughs> what, what, what's your library issue? Well, what, what we've been, well, we've been looking at, um, What's going on in the libraries? We've been working with the schools. I work with Deanna. I know you know. Do you, do you know Deanna? And so we've been looking at the kinds of books that they have in the school. And now we've also been looking at the libraries here in Manatee County and um, the staffing in the libraries because we have some very interesting staff and and the kinds of policies that they have. There are books in the schools that that are so horrendous that I couldn't even tell you what they say. Or I could send you because I put uh, paperwork through. I don't handle this. But they also, they also, but what happens is what you do in the schools comes here in the library. If I'm taking a book out of the school because it has graphic sexual content and putting it over here on the young adult's shelf, and it really should be shelved with adult books, that's going to be an issue. But then we go, oh my God, you're banning books, you're rotten, you're terrible. You know what, I'll send you a couple of them. I never read stuff like this, and I used to like romance novels, but this is like... Yeah, romance novels are written I, I am going to, I want to say you're wrong then. Don't, don't tell me you were sitting there reading Fifty Shades of Grey and all of a sudden this I one's worse. Come on, read that. come on. I would never read that. But, <laughs> you know, but the, the problem is that, you know, our policies... Uh, I could go to the whole American Library Association has issues because they are out of bounds. I know in Hillsborough County they discontinued their membership and so we're working through to try and I think the last thing was the All Access Pass. I don't know if you're familiar with that one. You know, but we had, I had met with Kevin Von Austinbridge a year, almost two years ago to talk about all of this. We laid everything out and nothing happened. I laid everything out. Deanna and I did, but Understood. nothing really look, happened. Look, I'm sure this is going to come up at a board meeting. I am 
full faith in my board that someone's oh, yeah. going I'm to bring, bring this up, up at some point in time. Absolutely. Um, I, I don't doubt it. it, it it's, it's a tricky thing because what you're saying, I don't think is what some people want. Um, you're saying, hey, this is in young young children, whatever you call it. Young, young adults. Young adults. Uh, but it should be in regular adults. Well, unless I'm putting up a, a, a security guard protecting the adult section, any kid who's overlooking young adults can walk 15 feet over here and take the same book off that shelf. So the only, the only way you're going to solve your problem is to get that book out of the library. And I would tell you right now, I'm not They're taking not going to take out it out of the library. library. I'm not asking that they take it out. But if you're a young adult, and there are sections, I have South uh, the Manitou, I would just terrible, but they have sections that says young adult, which mm -hmm. means this appeals to people. Well, what do you consider a young adult? Legally, and I asked Amanda this question, what's a young adult in Sparta? And she said the only thing she could find out is a young adult is somebody between the age of 18 and 21. But the American Library Association feels that a young adult is anybody from the age of 12 to 18. Which is not well, a legal opinion, by the well, way. So you're breaking the well, law when you provide kids no with pornography. I think that's a real definition of anything. I, but I, again, I, I will have this discussion, but again, the, the issue is if a book's in this building, the book's in the building, unless we're locking things behind things and going back to the days of Blockbuster, we've got the velvet curtain and you have to walk behind it to, to, <laughs> look, at, to, to look at a romance <laughs> novel. There, there, are, like, there are people who want that. I, I mean, I, I, I'm sure there are people who want it. I do not. Uh, but I'll tell you, I do not. You know, I, I just think you're going to have a hard time doing it. I get it. it that's perfectly fine. If you want to, I'm fully in favor of the, what is it, parental choice card? Is that what it's called? Yes. Sir. Parental access. choice card where, where a parent can come in and say, hey, here's the parental choice card. And based on the age of the kid, they're not permitted to check out a book at, after certain levels. And they can't go on to our electronic things and check out certain yeah. movies and things like that. I'm 100% in favor of that because okay. a parent can make that decision. I'm 100% in favor of assessing what books we have in this library and saying, maybe th we should switch up our Dewey Decimal take system and take out the one from this shelf and put it on this yes. shelf four feet away. Totally I ask. Okay, I'm 100% on board with that. But if anyone at any point in time thinks they're coming in here and just going to start ripping books out of here because no. once it moves to that shelf, the next step's going to be, well, my kid walked over there. Well, if your kid, if your kid's old enough to be in this library without a parent, then your kid's probably old enough to read wherever you pulled off the shelf. We need to judge what is appropriate for somebody who is not an adult, and if it's not appropriate, put it in the adult section. That's all I ask. And, I've, and I've, take I've, the tag off. This is young adult. And I, and I agree with that. I, and I have no, and I have no problem. What you just said, if that is literally what someone puts in, for, I have absolutely no problem. So with what the you school just said. district judges that that book, if they pull it out of the school because it's not appropriate. Does that automatically allow us to write to the library and say, well, the schools have pulled this, they've deemed it not appropriate according to the Parental Rights Act, therefore can we automatically judge that book as being inappropriate for young adults and put it in the adult section? I don't know if we're going to automatically say that. I think. That's... Well, you think the schools would agree with you in terms of... No, but I'm just saying, I, I'm just saying, I think that's broad to say whatever the school does, we do. Just, right. just like the stuff we do doesn't mean, if I automatically move a book from young adults to adult, does that mean the, does, well, the schools automatically have to yank it off their shelves entirely? Because I made the decision. No, we're independent bodies. But the parental. Well, we certainly we certainly take it. We certainly get the list. Libraries? We certainly get the list of the books they they move, okay. and those would probably be the first ones Tammy and her team and the, the advisory board would look at to see are they do they warrant moving. We would certainly do okay. that, but I wouldn't say by default the, the school board made. It. I don't listen to the school board, and they don't listen to me. We we're independent, and I trust Chad. And, but you're and not his subject board. to the same laws in Florida for for. Um, for inappropriate content. But what, But again, the, the difference between a school inappropriate content and a public library inappropriate is I have adults walking through. I have eight-year-old people walk through. A school, an elementary school, no, doesn't I'm have anyone over there. I'm just reclassifying it. I have, to, I have to accommodate everybody yeah. in this okay. building. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Same thing with Libby, same thing with Hoopla or Hula or Hoopla. All those things have to accommodate everybody. We, we are, I think, are doing an excellent job with the, the parent choice and trying to make adjustments to all access, which I believe we're switching to be in line with parent choice, right? All access by default is now going to have age limits on it. Yes, we're still in discussion with the school district. I know, but, but, that, but that's what we proposed. And I don't think the school board's gonna fight back on that because they want they pushed it on us to make us make that vote for them. Uh, and I talked to Chad and thanked them for that. But we talked about two years ago, we talked about, brought this issue up, that there were parents we had that didn't even know that children had IDs to the library, took their student ID card, logged on, and had complete access to everything without even knowing that their child had complete access. 
You know, there, there's stuff that's out there that we need to look at. And, and people school, think that's, that's fine. We're not disseminating information properly. Well, it was a joint effort between the schools and the, and the libraries. Yeah. That part was from the school district. They were, they were. They said to give you everything. Did they want it opened up to no limits on the, on the library court? No, there are limits. Now there are, right? Uh, there have been all along. And there will be more. But informing the parents and working with the parents was part of the school district's responsibility okay. as part of the interlocal agreement. But I am sympathetic with that because there's a lot going on when you register a student for school. Right, and I think we had dialogue with you, and I don't believe you ever said there were any limitations. I thought we asked the question. We did limit some of it because okay. there's, uh, within ebooks and things like that, yes. there's no parameters for filtering. Right, mm. right. So. You know, so you don't want your 12 year old to get. 20 shades of gray, whatever it is, 15 50, shades of gray. 50, 50, 50 excuse 20, me. 20 with, 20 with the free tool. <laughs> and that's definitely in the adult area. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> it continues to be some of the most popular books we have. <laughs> I'm sure I could learn something from it. <laughs> they call it um, porn for right soccer now. moms. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> soccer mom. Do you have any questions about that? I don't. Know. Just been sitting there quiet. Just it out. Mm -hmm. No, I'm, I'm new to the area, so I just uh, see what was going on in the book. Man, do you have any questions? We need the welcome wagon around here. No, not too many questions. Just seeing what's going on. What area do you so, in? Carol, I want to elaborate on what she said. You. Me? Carol. Yeah. Carol. What I did. Well, we were talking about the ACE and all of that stuff and talking about how we own some responsibility and then everyone has to take their part and we have to do things better and act with integrity and all that good stuff, right? That was what you were going talking about. So my question is, what do we do when there, when you go to the commissioners, like we're, you know, when you try to go to other departments and you go to the commissioners and you bring issues in, and George, thank you for some of the work that you do that is above and beyond. But again, you put your hands up and you say, I can't handle day to day, I'm not allowed to do day to day issues. So when we go to the commissioners because all other avenues have failed, and then we get to the supposed top of the situation and it's, I can't handle day to day. Where's the recourse for the constituents to go when things are going terribly wrong, when there's being, when there's lies, when there's lack of ethics, and there's a pattern of people not doing the duties of their job that my tax paying dollars are paying for? Sure. What do we do with that? Okay, I, I think there's a couple ways of looking at it. One, just your first assumption was saying you reached the top. I mean, this board is not the top of the organization is board is the board. I mean, it's like I always use the example of Apple. Like Apple has a very impressive board of directors. The board of directors makes big policy decisions for how Apple is going to conduct itself to improve shareholder value. That board of directors does not pick what color your iPhone is going to be okay. or what the next chip is going to be. This is not the role. The top of Apple is the CEO of Apple. Um, what I tell people is, you still come to us just because I can't dictate anything doesn't mean I can't work with staff to encourage things like like to let me put it look at the, the disabled veteran or the disabled persons advisory board look at the other advisory boards we're talking about here today look at stuff that like the street signs or the street stuff stop signs we just put in at El Conquistador look at um when we pick what roads to do for our bond that was all from the board we don't make those final decisions but I reached out to public works and said hey I met at an intersection with some constituents that have a neighborhood, we could really use some stop signs here and some traffic calming here. I met with them, I went out, I inspected the uh, intersection, I got in touch with Chad Budsell, I had one of his people come out, and we got it done, and now there's, there's signs there. I could single-handedly call them up and say, put signs here, I would need a vote from the board for something like that, and that's not the kind of stuff we vote on right or I could steer them into looking at an opportunity that they could do upon themselves. Same thing with animal welfare. We were gonna build a $20 million building. It was gonna take two plus years to build. We switched it to do to look at prefab and so forth. That came up because people but, like Agatha reached out to me about it. And other people that came out. up because people like me stood up month after month after month and said, there's rats. There's the ceilings falling in. Okay. All these things okay. are going wrong. I agree, but my, my point is you kept standing up to who? 
to everybody. But as a result of doing what I did to help the dogs to get that Bishop Project started, I received a blanket, you're no longer welcome at the shelter, and and then your response was, well, I've heard both sides and I don't know what to believe, which I then rebuttaled on record the following month when I read every single word that Jody Fisk stood and read to all of you about how great everything I'd been doing was and how I was the head of this and da 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 So there was no two sides, George, and you landed on there's two sides. There was not two sides. And you accepted you're, that. You're, 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 you accepted you're that. Saying it's not too no, 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 no. I quoted Jody Fisk to you. She can't have it both ways. She can't say in June, she's amazing, and we've entrusted her with A, B, C, and D, and she's gotten all these wonderful things done, and she's working cohesively and collectively with us, and this is going great. And two weeks later, fire people? No. There is no two sides. Uh, again, I'm not There's gonna, no two I, sides. I, I, look, I, I, so that's my point. I, Where do people go when they've gone everywhere, when an injustice and the lies are being perpetuated? To the polls. Because it's not ethical. No, what that, happened wasn't what ethical. Really it it wasn't know. ethical. Understood. Why don't you contact Barfield? I mean, if this contact who? That, no, that has nothing to do with it. I, I don't have the answer. I'm not That's a good idea. I, I'm not. I'm not trying again. I know we've had this conversation. I mean, everyone's also seen my very first email I sent to Lee and all of them immediately after it happened, where I yelled at them over it. I don't agree with the decision, but it's still their decision. Where's your recourse? It's not through us. All I can do is push and steer, and I tried very hard to keep pushing and steering. I, I kept putting on the agenda. Do you know that I, if it I wasn't for people like me still speaking up, those dogs wouldn't have gotten heaters plugged in today? I mean, she can fire me, but I, that she just kind of made it so that I don't have to play nice in the sandbox anymore. Now I can throw stones. And and I'm not going to stop advocating for the dogs because it makes Jody Fisk and Sarah Brown uncomfortable. It's not okay what's happening. I, I, I would say, with, without, I'm trying to figure out how to say this without sounding flippant or, or you will. rude to you. Um, the only way to fix, not to you, I'm saying to people, public, um, there's no direct way to fix it. Again, the board can only hire and fire two people. Well, let's ignore the aides because that's a new thing and that's not important. There's only two people. It's the county administrator and the county attorney. Well, only two people we can hire and fire. The county attorney doesn't ever come into play really because all the people you're concerned about fall under the county administrator in some extent ship up here. So the only recourse you would have through coming to people like myself other than advocating for and pushing for without any ability to do anything other than say please 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 on my end and hope that yeah. my voice is a little bit louder so i'm sitting on the ninth floor uh, is to get uh, effectively a, in a position where if a county administrator doesn't vote, talk to his deputy and that deputy doesn't talk to that director and that director doesn't talk to whoever's in charge of that in the case in your case the animal welfare if things aren't being done and there's reason for it to otherwise be done then you need a, a board, you need people that, that basically turn to that county administrator and say, your head's on the block, fix this, or you're going to have to be gone because you're the only one. I, I may love you, you may be the best person I've ever had working for me, but you're the only one I've got. So you're the only threat But then, but, but so unless to be you go make the same threat to the next person or, and to the next person, all the way down to who you're trying to get. That's the only thing we need. Right. So but, but you're never, but you're not going to have that. We had no administrator. That's the key. We had no administrator. And that, understood. That, that was a big problem. This all happened during a court time where you not only had an interim, but you had an interim that almost got removed from interim for a different interim while we were interviewing for a permanent that turned out to be the interim. Yeah. Uh, exactly. took over so the yeah, county has been without so a, a head a, a, a person for a very long time, and and we just get to, as constituents, sit back and let department heads eat the road. Make They're hires. running rough. So, to, to, to the same extent, the, the boards were not in dramatically different position. You, I all this time, I would have liked to have a permanent too. I when I kept pushing for impact fees back in April, April 18th, okay. I made a motion to to move impact fees forward. Their first excuse on why we couldn't do it is, we have an interim county minister. <laughs> we, have, we have an interim, there's no way this yeah, interim. Like, the county minister has nothing thing. to do with these. Well, now we have one. And so I, there's things that we got held back And all of you guys are wanting to be voted back in, 
I suggest that there's a, I mean, it seems that there's some pretty big topics. I, it's not just about the dogs. There's a lot of things. Going and it's on the that same, a lot of again, it's and accountability. It's a brilliant issue. Ethics are making this a difference is not in every new. Department. And all of these issues are not new. So I guess the constituents want you guys to put the pressure on the big guy to get the decisions and get the things done. Like we want to see some change. We want things to get done. You're talking about we Charlie Bishop as the administrator. Yeah. I he, agree. He I just mean, said they can put that's pressure who, on That's him who the ball to rolled. The, to get because the ball they picked him. Well, the point is, uh, right. care, I voted. <laughs> I know you voted no and thank you. How much your this no doesn't ever search? matter. No. Um, so I don't, I don't think we spend very we much want. on travel we because want. we had that search. Be that that search firm does all of our searches for okay. directors or whatever. It was just part of the contract. How so much money did we spend on recruiting and, 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 and how much questions. did we spend yeah. on that? Well, we wasted a lot of time. I said it, was, it, I said it wasn't as much because that. The consultant that was doing that search does all of our searches. It was part of our general our package contract. Deal with it. We would only pay them if we found somebody from the outside. So our cost was strictly the travel. Okay, that was their consultant. What what about the let's go meet the, the yes, the, yes. The, 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 let's have a little party. And we know we had to entertain them while they were in town. Mm -hmm. Right, which I'm sure said, it was on everybody's expense report. We have a final. Like, like I said, <laughs> other than the cost of the travel. It didn't cost anything because we didn't hire somebody from outside. It wasn't zero because we had to fly one person in from Atlanta. One and we had to have the house. little meet and greet. Well, with the how much do you think that cost over at Performing Arts? I don't care. Probably bucks? more than I could afford. <laughs> no, I have, I have a one because we're running out of time. <laughs> yes, we are. We're an unincorporated county. Is that what you said? Or no, 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 no. We're uncharted. So, so if we were a chartered county, we could get rid of a commissioner. But if we're uncharted, we have no recourse uh, to wait One, for I tried to propose us becoming a charter county, and there were six mayors waiting for me in a parking lot to fight me. Um, we're not becoming a charter. What, what it was the first the thing mayors. I did. My so very first recourse? council of governments meeting, I proposed chartering our county. What recourse do we have against commissioners when we feel they're not doing a good no. job? Or we have uh, well, issue? Once every four years. File an ethics That's complaint. That's the only thing we can do? Right, right. Yeah. Because right. right. um, I thought we... I supported all the people that we voted in, the Amandas and the Mike Rons, and this was going to be wonderful, and they were going to do a great job, and they've all been a big disappointment. Uh, there is, There has been a bill every year for the past two years, I think it may already have been filed for the third year up in Tallahassee, to open up recall opportunities in non-charter counties. A charter county has recall. If enough people sign a petition, they, they they'll they have, have a, a recall, just like they right. did out in California. Um, we can't do that for non-charter because if you're not chartered, you just go based on Florida statute, 100%. Okay. And, and the problem with going under Florida statute is Florida statute is dictated by Florida legislature and there's not a chance in hell Florida legislature is putting recall on the books for themselves. Mm -hmm. So we just that's why we don't have term limits because at non-charter county, we don't have term limits. You could literally sit here every term for 50 years if you want. And we've had multiple 20 plus years. It may make it this session. It, last session, it got all the way through the House. It got heard in two committees in the Senate, ran out of time. Uh, but I think it's got some backing right there. Recall Florida, we were Chance John Meyer and all that. Uh, it, we're it, backing it, in the Liberty Caucus. Yeah, it, it should, it it should it go. Bill. It should go through just like there's a new bill to try to make eight-year term limits for all commissioners, even on charter county yeah. or non-charter county. But what is this? I state? actually tried to put that on our local legislative policies okay. last year to encourage Tallahassee to put term limits on non-charter counties. Um, nobody else on my board agreed. And what was the argument with this? You said the city mayors are against a charter? All cities are against chartering counties because once you charter a county, it opens up a lot of opportunity because in theory, the citizens could put a ballot initiative on to supersede city development code and land use to the county. And the city's arguments here is the cities are small. There's only about... 60,000 people yeah. total in all of our cities combined. There's 340,000 people not in cities. So if you put that on the ballot, in theory, unincorporated voters could pretty much do whatever they want to cities. So no city wants it. Even though I promise, look, I only want this for term limits and recall. And at the time I wanted it for campaign finance because Sarasota had it. They've since gotten rid of it. Um, but the cities, the cities didn't want it because they actually had a whole work session and brought me out to Anna Maria just to teach me on how terrible charter it counties are. It was a big thing for a little while there. Uh, but that's why they don't want it. Strictly for that. They don't want it. And, and right now the cities are going through it on the island. 
Their concern with the Empire study is if that study comes back and the decision is to roll the three cities on Anna Maria right. into the city of Brandon, happened, or even worse, than anyway. roll it into unincorporated, then their number one concern is that they lose their mayor. Their number one concern is they lose their rights to control development, and that opens up city of Bradenton or unincorporated right. Manatee right. County being able to dictate, just like Siesta Key's dealing with right now with their three hotels. Yeah. You know, once it becomes a, a money grab from a tax base, you lose it because it's no longer local representation. That's why they didn't want to try. Are you involved in that? Nobody's involved in it right now. Um, the state led delegation ordered the study. The study hasn't been done yet. Okay. Um, I'll still never be involved in it because Manatee County per se isn't directly involved in it right now. It's okay. those three cities and then we found out a few weeks ago City of Bradenton. Okay. But that nobody knew about City of Bradenton, that kind of uh -huh. I think that was set on yeah. accident. That was kind of hard to hold somebody accountable mm -hmm. civil or ethical about it, wasn't it? So yeah. any last questions in yeah. the last three minutes? Okay. Sure, last chance, new guy. All good. <laughs> new guy. Hi, new guy. <laughs> What's the next step for the comprehensive plan? When, I when? Ask you three minutes. No, I'm just, I, I don't want the big, uh, actually, I'm more like the date and when we should expect some movement. I have no idea. Um, they haven't given us an update on that. Um, I Which asked is, Nicole Knapp a couple weeks ago when I was dealing with impact fees at the time and we were dealing with wetland stuff at the time. She was just Are getting put in as permanent board? administrator or director. Yes. I'll follow up on it. We already did the first round of, hear, of hearings and public discussion and comment. Now they're working on the draft. At some point it's supposed to come back with a draft and then have a whole new round of public comment, the task force and everything. I, last I heard was spring. That's very that's a very broad with I don't know the specific thing. Uh, and when I asked, I didn't get an answer, but admittedly they were busy. Did you have any luck on Ken Piper's question about the uh, individually produced um, comprehensive plan and distribution? He sent me an email today, actually, that he was trying to get a hold of some of stuff so he could file a, a new one. Uh, he was going to a records department and was having problems with a records department. That was that email came through just a couple hours ago. Sorry, okay. but no, I, I don't have enough data. I did ask how does somebody? I literally asked um, Courtney, how does somebody file their own comp plan request? And she said the same thing I said again. Like, the whole thing, like literally, it's thousands of pages. Nobody's writing thousands of pages of comp plan themselves. It's it. They're not. Um, if you have specific requests of specific sections, then. You submit them during public comment for consideration um, to rewrite the entire thing from scratch. I, I don't know if we have a policy for that or a procedure for that because I think that's unheard of uh, for someone to do. But in theory, you could submit that just like you submit anything else. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing precluding anyone from doing it. He asked specifically, how do you go about doing it? Like you email it or put it on a thumb drive. I don't know. There's no formal thing where we're going to put one proposal up against another on a vote where it's preliminary. We haven't even gotten our draft done yet. Okay. All right. Thanks. Anything else? So then, any, any, you guys any not going to say anything? Carol? No questions? You got nothing? Yep. I got nothing. All right. I got to drive home in the dark. The last time I was in the deer, we're not going to do that again. Is this, is this Are you coming back? I don't know. I, I just wanted to see Where'd you move here from? Yeah. Um, Northwest Indiana. Oh, so, where the vowel uh, states. Oh, Welcome. Um, Welcome. Yeah, well, I, I do these every month. Uh, where, are you, where are you at next? We need the welcome wagon. Uh, the welcome the, wagon. That sheet over there, Tell actually, the first six is. months of 2024 have already been finalized. The next one's Central Library, December 20th. Uh, it's right before Christmas. I doubt anyone will show up, but I wanted to make sure I hit it. But the first one in 2024 is going to be the first one at the new Lakewood Ranch Library. Thank you. Thanks, George. Of course.